This is the final video talking about algebraic manipulation of trigonometric functions, and we're going to use two examples that use a lot of what we've learned in the last three videos. All right, let's look at this. Boy, this looks like a total mess. We have a cosecant times, in parentheses, sine squared x plus cosine squared x times tangent x, all over sine x plus cosine x. All right, and we need to simplify this. What's the first thing we should do? Well, we could do the distributive property, but you know what? I think, first of all, I'm going to see if I can change my cosecant and my tangent into sines and cosines. I have some sines and cosines already. Let's put them all in terms of sine and cosine. So my cosecant of x becomes 1 over sine x, and my tangent x becomes sine x over cosine x. That was a reciprocal identity and a ratio identity. All right, now, well, it looks like I can reduce a cosine out of the term cosine squared x times sine x over cosine x, and if I do that, I have something that looks like this. Now I have 1 over sine x times the quantity sine squared x plus cosine x sine x. Now I'll go ahead and do the distributive property of my numerator. And then I'll get sine squared x over sine x, cosine x sine x over sine x, and that whole thing is still over sine x cosine x. Well, I see some things I can reduce in my numerator again. I'm going to divide out a sine x out of my numerator and denominator of my first term, and then I'll divide out a sine x out of my numerator and denominator of my second term. And once I do that, I'll end up with sine x plus cosine x divided by sine x plus cosine x. Now what I'm about to do, which is reduce out those two terms, it might look like I'm contradicting myself, because before I said I can't cancel terms. Well, I'm not canceling terms in this case. I'm dividing the entire phrase sine x plus cosine x out of my numerator and out of my denominator. So I'm not just picking one term. I'm dividing out by that entire phrase sine x plus cosine x. And so my final answer is just 1. Well, that was awfully neat. I started off with that big mess, and I ended up with the number 1. Let's look at a second example. All right, what I've been doing is changing all my cosines and cosecants and cotangents, etc., into sines and cosines. But to be honest, in this case, I might hold off because I don't see any sines and cosines right now. In fact, what I'd like to do is factor this. And if I remember, something in this form can factor into something that looks like this. Or I can simplify it further and just have the whole quantity, cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x, all squared. I can solve this two different ways. The easier way is if I remember what my Pythagorean identities look like. Let's see, here they are again. I do have one that relates cotangent and cosecant, and that Pythagorean identity is 1 plus cotangent squared equals cosecant squared. So if I take that, is there anything I can do to manipulate this equation so I can get one side of the equation equaling cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x? Well, I think I can. I think if I take this equation and subtract from both sides cotangent squared x, then I get my phrase. I have cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x, and that's just equal to 1. So if I go ahead and substitute 1 for my cosecant squared x minus cotangent squared x, I have 1 squared, or just 1. All right, but I said we can go about this two different ways. What if you didn't recognize this is a Pythagorean identity? Well, the next thing I would probably do is rewrite this as sines and cosines. Cosecant squared x would be equal to 1 over sine squared x, and cotangent squared x would be cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. Once I do this, well, I already have a common denominator, so I can go ahead and add these fractions, and I get 1 minus cosine squared x divided by sine squared x. I'll still need to rely on my Pythagorean identities, but I'll rely on the one I know the most. That is, sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1. All right, so again, 
I don't have something that looks like sine squared x plus cosine squared x. What I have is 1 minus cosine squared x. Is there anything I can do to my Pythagorean identity to get one side of the equal sign looking like 1 minus cosine squared x? Well, yes, I can. If I subtract both sides by cosine squared x, then I get sine squared x equals 1 minus cosine squared x. Great, I'll take that and I'll substitute 1 minus cosine squared x with sine squared x. Now I have sine squared x divided by sine squared x all squared. Again, I get 1 squared or just 1. Again, we've taken a very complex looking trigonometric expression and simplified it to a very nice, neat answer. Now I do want to warn you, when you do your homework assignments, your homework assignments will be multiple choice. However, my tests are never multiple choice, so don't fall into the trap of just guessing the right answer and continuing with your homework. Make sure you can do it from scratch if you didn't have those multiple choice answers to choose from. And there we conclude algebraic manipulations of trigonometric functions. This is the final part in the series, and we've done two different examples that use the skills we've learned in the previous three lectures.